All right, let's go ahead and stand to our feet. We're going to worship. I have something I want to share with you guys um, just a little bit later. But for now, I would like for us to uh, just be ready to enter his presence. Let's go ahead and pray together and get this party started in Jesus' name. All right. Dear Lord, thank you so much, Father, for this day, God. We are so abundantly blessed here, God. Father, we are so grateful for your presence already here with us, Lord. We can feel you all around us, Lord, your love, your grace, and your mercy, God. Lord, I just ask that you would come in, Father, like a flood, that you would flood our hearts, Father, with your peace, Lord. I pray that you would lead us and guide us, Father, but help us to enter into your worship, into your presence this morning, to see you face to face, Lord, and to come boldly to your throne, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. You ready?
you guys doing this morning? I am great. Thank you. I'm always great when the Lord is with me, which is always. So I wanted to share Galatians chapter 6 this morning with you, and it is, we harvest what we plant. And that was so good when I read it last night, but um, verse 7 says, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. And he only promises that to us if we don't give up. You know, it's really easy to get weary in well-doing, especially if you've been walking with the Lord for a long time. And I was very blessed to be called at a young age by him because I know he saved me a lot of time and a lot of heartache. But with that time spent with the Lord growing with him, we all go through seasons. We go through seasons where we're not as excited as we used to be. We don't have that joy when we first had of our salvation, but it's our job to say, no, awaken my heart, and it's time to be joyful again. We have to do that. That is on us. We have to do that. We have to make that choice because the further you slide from that first love, that first joy that he gave you, you're going to come to a place where you don't know who God is anymore. So I just want to encourage you this morning. I want to call you to obedience to him this morning. I want to just encourage you that even if you have left your first love, that it's never too late. It's never too late to return back to him. And he is there for you with arms open wide, just like he was for the prodigal son. So come back to his presence. Wake up to his love again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Shine 
salvation wakes our chains to break and we is 
in our shaking answer can be calmed and broken for my regard but through it all through it all my eyes are on you it's through it all through it all it is well it's through it
Yeah. 
faithful. dry wasteland and he's trying to tell us this morning that all those things that are imperfect are becoming perfect in his presence because he is making you into something new Amen. he is making you a new creation so let go of the old How many are excited about Jesus this morning, huh? Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. This has been coming on for some time, guys. This is not just, it didn't just happen today. This has been coming on for some time. And things are changing in the spiritual and they're changing in the natural. It's the way it's coming down. It's, he said, I create a new heaven, a new earth, and it'll bring it down. We don't bring it down. We just obey. We just enjoy. Hallelujah. Uh, it's so fitting. I was talking to Wayman before, and I was, Rachel and I talked a little bit yesterday, but a lot of the stuff that she just shared with us this morning, we didn't talk about. But however, the word of the Lord came to me on Thursday, and, and it's never, ever, 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 just to be clear, it's been like that before for me. And it was driving down to work. I shared it with some, but it was driving down to work. I started communicating with God like I normally do every day when I go to work and I started talking to God about the you know about things in the church and all that and just just communicating back and forth like most of us should do and uh, all of a sudden he started speaking and I thought I concentrate so hard on the things of God that maybe it's just me you know just doing a lot of heavy thinking and all this other stuff you know maybe I need to just relax a little bit and put on some praise music so I turned on the praise music, and God says, turn that off. And I knew exactly who it was speaking. You know, immediately I knew, okay, so I turned it off, and then I started listening, and then the message got a little bit more stern as he spoke. And then it was, I'm, by then, I'm almost down there in Woodstock, Canton area, which traffic starts going pretty crazy that time of the morning. There was no place to pull over. There was no place to go anywhere. There was no, you're in the middle, you know? And, uh, and, and I just waited till the voice subsided a little bit, and then I called Rosemary, and I said, look, write this down, and then text it back to me, because I, and the Lord, gracious and kind as he is, helped me contain everything in my limited mind, you know, so I could share it with the church, okay? Because this is not for us, but it is a stern word a little bit, but it's not, but it's an exciting word if we take it rightfully. Amen. See, if we take it as condemnation, we'll never grow. Because a lot of times we take things and we say, well, that's just condemnation. Really, what well, we are being babies. Okay, we, we're just refusing to grow up in Christ. That's really what we're doing. But if we take it and we say, you know, he's right about this right here. Because I studied it before I gave it to you guys. I had it since Thursday. I've been reading it over and over and over again because I wanted to make sure it didn't come down as condemnation. And, and uh, here's what the word says, and then uh, we'll go from there because Wayman's got a message for today, and I know he's anointed. All right, this is what he said to me. He says, we are losing our excitement, letting ourselves be complacent, sliding into complacency. Renew the joy of my salvation. When, when, when we were first saved and when we started the church, we were willing to do anything for the Lord. 
But the enemy, subtle as he is, is trying to convince us that all is well. So we will slacken our excitement and desire to serve him. So awaken my people. This is not a time to slide and to slumber. This is a time to be ready for a fierce battle. For I am ready to do a great thing, but only those, and this is the exclamation point, only those who hear my voice and are led by my spirit will be able to perform it. See, we need to get a hold of this right here and say, are we going to be these people or are we just going to slide into just another church? We had a wonderful service that Sunday, AC. Thank you. Please spare me. I'm not here about having a wonderful service. And I'm grateful for the wonderful service he gives us. It's not me. And it's not Wayman. But this is not about, this is about serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is about serving God mighty himself. And if we lost our excitement, and what Rachel said is very, very fitting. Sometimes it's like when you've been walking with God for 30 years, 20 years, you know, we've been at it a long time. And sometimes you go to plateaus and valleys and, and dips. And, but we must not let ourselves get like that. We must overcome these things and go forward with him. Or else you're going to keep going to plateaus. You're going to be going down, up and down, up and down. Never overcoming anything. God's an overcomer. He made us all to be overcomers through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to get a hold of that and, and just tell the enemy, no more in my life. No more in my life. My life is written in the, in, in the book of life. And therefore, I'm going to live life like it's written in the book of life. That's all that I got. Let's all digest that and go with it. You know, perseverance is so important in our walk with God because if we don't persevere through those times where we're not necessarily feeling it, then you're never going to grow in your relationship with God. And we all go through those seasons. We all go through, we don't feel like getting up. We don't feel like going to church. We don't feel like fighting today because maybe we've been fighting for 10 years. And we just don't feel like it. But God is not a God who is led by your feelings or your emotions. He's higher than that. So we need to rise above that as well. That's what he calls us to do. So I'm going to pray over us. Father, thank you for the word that was spoken here this morning, Lord. Father, let it go into good ground, Lord, where it can grow, Father. Send your Holy Spirit to water it, Father. Send your Holy Spirit to grow it in us, Father, to make a new work in us, Lord. Thank you for making us new in your presence, Lord. Thank you for taking those things that are broken and making them beautiful, Lord. Thank you for taking those things that are ugly and imperfect and melting them away in your presence, Father. Lord, I pray for the rest of the service today that is to come. Let us just wait expectantly, watch expectantly for you and for all that you're going to do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.